years ahead. That will be at midday, of course. Now let's uh, get the thoughts of the Conservative MP Simon Hall, who is supporting Theresa May. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, so the leadership contest goes goes ahead, though. It does. I think this is a topless tantrum from some in my party who are uh, just not happy that they are getting their uh, their way. I thought what the tweet that you read out from Chuck Ramuna was absolutely right. You can change the leader every day between now and uh, New Year's Eve. It wouldn't change the parliamentary um, arithmetic. And, you know, it's all well and good for Bernard Jenkins, my colleague Bernard, to say, well, we changed the Prime Minister in 1940, but we then formed a national government. We didn't try to govern alone, so I'm not entirely sure whether his historical analogy um, actually stands up, as I don't think he's actually advocating a national government. Another thing that doesn't change is the fact that the DUP will not support this agreement, and without the DUP supporting the government, it's a government without a majority, a government without power. If I can just read uh, what Arlene Foster has said today, the, the leader of the DUP, I can't say I'm surprised being here in Westminster. Yesterday I did realise there were a lot of conversations going on, however, my focus is to continue to be on the withdrawal agreement and the fact that the backstop needs to be taken out of that withdrawal agreement. Theresa May got nowhere yesterday with doing that, therefore well, she's a Prime Minister I, who doesn't come on power. Well, with the greatest respect to our friends in the DUP, I think I would just say that it's the Conservative Party who decides who leads the Conservative Party and not another party, irrespective of how friendly they have been to us either now, in the past, or in the future. I do wish that in Northern Ireland we were able to hear uh, more voices on this uh, issue. It's a great shame that we haven't got a Northern Irish Assembly, which would provide a more mixed platform of views on this. I think it's important to but, remember but, on, sorry, that just... Northern Ireland voted to remain in the referendum, and organisations like the Northern Irish our farmers are supportive of the deal. So but with the best respect to them, I think, the, it's, I the, think the, it's a mistake to assume that the DUP speaks for the whole of Northern Ireland. The DUP holds a key position in the Commons though and your party is reliant on its support. Well it's an important position but it's not a blackmail chip I'm afraid and the Tory party is not going to be held to ransom and we're not going to have who our leader is or what our policies are dictated by by other parties in the House of Commons. Then it's a political stalemate, this, isn't it? Well, because there is no way without DUP support the government can get, get, get anything. Well, I think, well, uh, you don't have to carry legislation to be in government. This is a very modern way of defining the success of the government. There's lots of things government can do without actually uh, enacting legislation. But I think the whole House now should be focusing on delivering a Brexit deal that respects the result of the referendum, but moves the country uh, forward. The but scale, we, but sorry to keep it we cannot, we cannot be blackmailed by people who just don't happen to like the direction of travel and are not fully aware or not prepared to wake up, smell the coffee, look at the arithmetic in the House of Commons and say the vast majority of MPs, irrespective of party, are in favour of the European Union's relationship with the UK ending, but that we leave that relationship with a deal. Now, either you run towards a general election, because as I said before, you can either check, you can change the election, you can change the prime minister every day between now and the new year. It doesn't change the arithmetic, and so the majority of people over there in that place want to see us leave with a deal which respects the referendum result, but which also preserves and protects our national economy. That's what I'm is, interested Is that then the territory we're actually in, heading for another general election? Because you say that um, it's not down to the DUP to decide policy. We have been in a position where yesterday a vote was pulled, the, 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 the bill that the Prime Minister wants to get through that she couldn't even put because she knows there's absolutely well, I, no way she's I, going to put I think the Prime Minister was going to be damned if she did and damned if she didn't with regards to that. If she hadn't listened to those three days of debate and carried on regardless, she would have been accused of being tineered and arrogant. Uh, because she did listen and she said, look, there's a major theme coming through many colleagues on all sides of the house with concerns about the backstop. I'm going to press the pause button on this debate, not cancel it, press the pause button on the debate, and I'm going to go back and see if I can get clarification, greater assurance, which may help Parliament come to a majority view to support the deal. I think that is a, the actions of a responsible statesperson 
who is thinking about the national interest and is trying to square an incredibly difficult parliamentary circle. I think she should be applauded rather than condemned. Simon Gore, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, let's go to the BBC.